The Clock in the Corner is um, a piece by John Hill of London. Um, it's a uh, pagoda top with finials with a chinoiserie case. Um, it's very distressed, it's quite a nice look to it now. Um, brass, brass and silvered face, eight day movement. It's a nice piece, isn't it? With an automaton at the top there. And um, we, we have a mahogany bureau, um, about 1750, 1760 date, um, unusually retaining its broken architectural pediment where it breaks in the middle there and its dental moulding uh, around the sides and the top. It's got lovely Cuban mahogany uh, finish to it, nice narrow doors, astragal mouldings, OG feet, swan handles, just really nicely proportioned is that. Nice piece. And this is an attractive oak case clock. It's uh, John Stancliffe, uh, 1770. Uh, it has a 30 hour movement and again with a, a brass and silver dial. Nice uh, blind fret carving to the frieze and quite a nice narrow body with column corners. And you can just see the oak, the radial cut of the oak as it goes down. But just nice proportions of that one columns again to the top to match the columns of the, the side. Here we have a mahogany and satin wood chest of drawers, 18th century Northern European. Uh, it has a satin wood banding, quadrant corners in satin wood, uh, mahogany backgrounds. The two colours are, are almost the same, they're just the mahogany is faded with age uh, and it would have been a lot darker originally. Brass ring handles, satin wood down the quadrant corners, and uh, in the top there's an inlaid shell which has uh, quite a nasty chunk missing from the centre. Also mouldings missing from the side, bandings missing from the side. Uh, there's cocked beading which is the little beading that goes around the edge of the drawer. There's also the runners which inevitably run badly with age. They need replacing so they're nice and smooth. Another thing I'd, I'd like to try and do with this is because the colour's so nicely faded back, to maintain that colour as much as possible, it would be quite easy to, to strip everything off and go back to a, a rich dark colour. Um, but it's better to maintain something of the age and, and patina of the original piece and the look that, that hundreds of years have, have given it. So just briefly, the next stage will be replacing some of the veneers. The shell in the centre here has got quite a complicated uh, repair to do and the corners particularly are broken away. Now what I would ideally need is the right colour veneer so I would, I would take that from a, an 18th century chest of drawers. I've got a piece here so what I would do is I would lift off the old veneer to replace the missing veneer on the, the chest. As you can see there's various pieces of veneer uh, missing from this corner. So the first stage will be to cut some new pieces from old timber to fit and that will go roughly there and across for the satin wood and some banding on the side. These would have more work and then be polished in to match. This all gets glued down and polished in and coloured properly but it's the same quality of veneer that's existing on the chest of drawers. Okay so we've got the chest of drawers finished, if you can ever really finish a, a chest of drawers there's always something more to do to it but as finished as I want it to be. Um, so as I say the drawer runners have been replaced so it runs really nice and smoothly now. This beading has been replaced and various bits of veneer that were missing. As you can see with the central shell motif it's been repaired rather than being replaced. Replacing something like that in my opinion is changing the look of it. It's, it's, it's too big a restoration. It's nice to just put something back um, where, where it's just missing and, and blend it in nicely. So you can see slightly the, the repairs being done but it's aesthetically more pleasing. The colour is pretty well exactly the same as it was when we started using old veneers and doing some light bleaching etc to keep that, that patination that we wanted. And again as you can see from the last uh, pictures of this corner there was quite a lot of damage. The satin wood was broken away, uh, there were big lumps of veneer out, there was a moulding missing down the side here and the veneer was missing in part 
So I'd say I replaced those with, with similar veneer from a similar period, um, which hopefully makes it look as untouched as possible. I think it's just worth saying that some of these pieces are made by the finest craftsmen of the period. And of course, we're not chopping down any more trees. We're, we're not transporting them halfway across the world. They're here, they've been here for hundreds of years and they'll be here for a, a few more hundred years. And even the restoration process is very green because we're using old pieces which have come from pieces that are broken in the past and restore some of the better pieces. So they're a lovely thing to have. They're aesthetically pleasing. They're just nice to have around. They've got that history with them. You know, if they could talk and tell the stories that uh, things they'd seen, you know, that it's a lovely thing to have around you. And uh, you know, I'm, I enjoy working on them. I enjoy having them in the shop. And I think they're just lovely things. <laughs>